it's early in the morning and we're gonna go to fish Lake Arenal or uh, Laguna de Arenal with Captain Ron. Well, ideally, I think we're gonna be trying to catch guapote, some species of, uh, that's a cichlid, and also uh, machaca, which is a grassiform, which is sort of like a piranha. In fact, it might be a species of piranha. And also they have a lot of species of uh, mohara, which are tilapia, which are also types of cichlids. So we'll find out more. Ben and I were driving east from the town of La Fortuna, which rests at the western base of the sizable Arenal volcano, to meet Captain Ron, who was motoring his boat south to meet us at Lake Arenal Southern Docks. While en route, a Cody popped out of the forest and we briefly stopped to examine the little fellow. The creature seemed a bit discombobulated, perhaps looking for a handout, and also had the appearance of mange, a disease that is transferable to humans. We bit him well, then carried on our way. Lake Arenal, Costa Rica's largest lake, is an artificial lake, created by a large dam on the southern point. This reservoir is a contributor of hydropower and a reason why Costa Rica produced 98% of its electricity by renewable resources in 2016. Certain villages were relocated to make way for the dam, meaning that Ben and I had the potential to be fishing over an old cemetery. Captain Ron was our guide atop the magnificent lake. I brought my baitcaster reel from the States and he supplied a rod as well as another left-handed baitcaster setup. He also supplied Ben with some right-handed baitcaster setups and tackle. Captain Ron is an expert fisherman on the lake, holding the record guapote, or rainbow bass, at 26 and a half inches. We listened to all of his fishing advice on this foreign lake. Our strategy was to peg the shorelines with small crankbaits, with mostly steady retrievals between the thickness of the submerged plants. Occasionally snagging the pricklers, or plants under the surface, meant we were fishing in the areas where the guapote were hiding. Ben was the first to hook a fish on a blue-bellied white-bodied crankbait that was retrieving at one meter, or about three feet in depth. A foul hook on a small female guapote, or female rainbow. I thought I did something and I was like... So is this a... Uh... This is the female rainbow? Okay. You want a picture of it with the hook in or out? Uh, it doesn't matter. Okay. Out, it's fine. Oh, nice. Canana farm teeth. Uh -huh. When they get about five, six pounds, those two front fangs get almost three quarters of an inch long. And then here's how they. Come on, baby, let go. Protrusible. Yeah, see how it comes way out like that? Yeah. Look at the bone on the top of their head, how it slides out. That's right. And that's, that's how they suck them When the guapote is hunting, the protrusible jaw will shoot out, creating suction, and the prey will be sucked into the mouth, then latched onto with the sharp front teeth. Touch a fish with a dry hand. It takes perfect. Captain Ron brings up a great point. It is better for the fish if the fisher person has wet hands prior to handling. Fishes have mucous membranes on their outer layers that protect them, such as from unwanted pathogens, and the mucus also aids in osmoregulation, or the balancing of salt ions between the fish and the water. Ben would soon again hook another guapote, this time a male. These fish dive down when hooked trying to free themselves in the underwater plants. Ben is doing well to not let this fish tangle itself further in the grass, slowly pressuring and reeling the fish to the surface. And yes, that makes foul hook number two, but a hook nonetheless. Normally you'd call that a foul hook. But yeah, that is a foul hook. <laughs> <laughs> Look at what this thing is a foul hook. <laughs> Fishing in new waters always requires adjustments, and Ben needed to tune his hook sets away from the big pike and largemouth bass that he was used to catching in the States. Unlike the larges and pike, 
these guapote did not slam the bait very hard. There you go. Then here's, there here's, I'll show you a little trick to these fish. They calm down when you hold them like this. Oh, really? Just make a little crown with your finger like that, and he'll, he'll chill. Look at the color in his face. Oh, that is, it's like an iridescent, uh -huh. beautiful. The gorgeous iridescent spotting and patterning is only found on the males of the species, likely a visual variable for sexual selection, where females will choose males to mate with based on the health and vibrancy of the male's appearance. Captain Rod, pura vida, man. I mean, you gotta back up a step. Here, I'll get a shot with you, man. Too. Smile. Look like you're happy. You kind of face. Okay, good. Yeah. And once again, Ben has foul hooked a fish, another female guapote. Guapote will dig holes or little caverns, and according to Captain Ron, this species, like a number of other species of cichlids, are mouth brooders, meaning that they will house their young in their mouths to protect them from predation until they are large enough to wander the water without their parent. Now, uh, when you're telling if it's male or female, uh -huh. specifically on this little guy, right? What are you looking for precisely? The, when they're really small, the, most of the females rarely have a lot of green on their fins. Uh -huh. It's mostly the male that has that. So just even the slightest blue green on Typically, yeah. But mostly, yeah, she's got a lot of yellow. It might be a small female. But usually uh, only the males get that blue green up here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So up on this ledge, there's a uh, there's a branch overhanging with a cormorant on it, and Captain Ron here says that it has a symbiotic relationship with the machaca, and that um, the machaca will eat the droppings of the cormorant in the water. So Ben's casting a lure under there right now to maybe see if he can pick one off. What do you call that again? That's an aninga. Uh, it's in the family of the cormorant. We spotted another aninga drying off on a branch, but we also noticed something peculiar beneath it. We thought maybe this was an injured bird, and so we went over to see if we could help. They can stay in her water a long time. What the heck is that? Oh, it's a little, oh look. How funny, I wonder why, he must be hurt me. Look at him just sitting there. That's wild. Yeah. Never seen one do that. He might be stunned or something. Yeah, that guy is just... You know what, that is a baby. Yep, that's a baby. Uh, we'll get away from him and calm down. Yeah, that's a young one that got away from Mama somewhere. Ben was having a lot of success at the bow with the white-bellied blue dorsum crankbait. I was coming up short while switching between some Rapala jointed crankbaits and even a chug bug surface lure. Having fished for 30 years or so, I know that fishing isn't always catching. Oh my grand slam, man! It was a pleasure to be atop the magnificent lake with the volcanoes in the distance, the toucans singing in the trees, and the calming ambience of nature. Oh, 
and Captain Ron supplied us with refreshments, delicious sandwiches, and the best banana bread to ever have touched my tongue. The wind was picking up, white capping the water, and it was my turn to be at the bow. I abandoned my tackle that I had brought from the States and accepted to put on one of Captain Ron's crankbaits. And I wouldn't be disappointed. Use the tips of your finger, like there you go. Now you get the good colors. In there. Yeah, look at that. Sweet. Pretty little eye on them. Nice. Beautiful. Look at him. Yeah, that Smooth. iridescent coloring goes, it's in all the fins, anal fin, mm -hmm. caudal fin, on the cheek, yep. to the nape. Wow. All right, let's let this guy go. Cool. Touch it off. All right. Chocolate found the end of my line. Not large, but surely a specimen to appreciate. That's how we do this stuff, right? So look at that. It's definitely a carassiform with the adipose fin. Big eye. Can you uh, open that? This fish is actually mostly herbivorous when mature meaning it eats fruits, nuts, and plants. The sharp incisors help to tear through the tough cellulose structures of plants. Look at those teeth. Come on, buddy. There you go. That's awesome. That's <laughs> Isn't that cool? Look at that. Shoot, those things are freaking vicious. Now imagine one of these, you know, six, eight pounds. Cool. Yeah. All right. Th told too. Thank you. Bodies, man. Overall, the day was incredible. Between the brilliant scenery, the animals around the lake, and the beautiful fish caught, there wasn't a dull moment. Captain Ron offered superb guidance to help us land our catches, and was very knowledgeable about the history and fauna around the right now. Many of his clients catch much bigger fish than we had caught. His company's fishing guide service is in the description below the video. I know I'll be contacting him again when I'm back in the wonderful country of Costa Rica. More to come from Costa Rica, some amazing ocean dives atop lively rock reef ecosystems, and I'll share some must-do adventures if you're there. Don't hesitate to contact me with questions or comments. Keep loving the beautiful chaos of nature. Mmm, rico.